Welcome to Sam's Business Growth Show. I'm Sam Dunning, a digital marketing, sales, and business growth evangelist. Tune in and subscribe today as I'll be interviewing business leaders, experts, and entrepreneurs from around the globe. You'll be learning their story, how digital marketing has helped them along the way, and exclusive tips and insights to help you skyrocket your own business. Hey everyone, welcome back to another LinkedIn Live and welcome to a fresh episode of Sam's Business Growth Show. I'm excited today to be joined by Jordan Paris. Jordan is a 22 year old author, he's a podcast host and entrepreneur. He's been featured in Forbes, Entrepreneur, Men's Health, Yahoo Finance, and Market Watch. His podcast, Growth Mindset University, is ranked number six in Apple's self improvement category. It's number three in the training category and number five in the how-to category. He's interviewed some massive guests, well-known all around the world, such as Grant Cardone, Robert Green, Mark Manson, Dan Millman, Ryan Serhant, and Naveen Jain, to name just a few. Plus, he's the founder of Trend Up Media, who help um, people basically who want to get their podcast produced, do it in a very professional and uh, well-rounded manner. Jordan, a very well, warm welcome to the show, man. How are you doing, sir? Hey, thanks for having me. I like the I like the layout and switching between them. It's a you got a cool little overlay here. <laughs> but, <laughs> but hey, really, really, thank, thanks, thanks for for taking enough interest in me to uh, ask me some questions and have me here today. I, I'm always grateful for that. No worries, man. So excited to jump right in. And as usual, we'd love to know a bit more about your story. So first off, it'd be great to get a bit of background on yourself. Jordan, you're only 22 years old. It sounds like you've accomplished a heck of a lot. So if we could learn a bit more about what you've done up to now, really, some of the key business, some of the key jobs you've had, and perhaps a few lessons along the way in terms of sales and business. Yeah, yeah I did the, did the camp counselor thing. I was sports staff there. I, I was like, probably 14, 15, did the, the busing in a restaurant thing, did the serving thing, uh, totally flamed out once I became a server, was not great at that as an 18 year old. Um, I think I'd be really, really good at it now. Um, cause I, I just didn't know how to talk to people then, but back then, yeah, I just wasn't very good. I would be good now. I think I, I I've always, I've, I've like joked that and it's like a half joke. Like I would, if if a restaurant let me for one day serve, like be a be a waiter, like I would I would do it. I would take like a four hour shift. Um, I don't need to get paid any money. I it would, I think it would just be a good test of my my people skills and just to see how far I've come. I think it'd be kind of fun because um, I remember it was a disaster before. Like it would be cool for me to 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 just see that. Um, but you know, of course, and I, I, and I have people, I know people that like run restaurants and nobody wants to let me do it because like, yeah, you know, then the issue comes in, like you have to pass a, a test of like knowing the menu and the drinks. And, you know, I, so I just wouldn't have like a restaurant <laughs> knowledge, which I think, I think I, I think I'd be fine. But anyway, cool, man. Yeah. So uh, we'll, what we'll yeah. do is we'll power through some of the, some of the highlights of, of what you've done, what you've learned along the way up to now. Um, and then we'll go, we'll dive into, for the audience, anyone who's just tuned in in terms of your podcast and how you've built that up massively and how you've grown your podcast production business as well. So restaurant server was one of the, the first roles. Like you say, it's, it sounds like it was it was pretty tricky. If it was one of the first things you did, dealing with people face-to-face is never that easy. I know as I've done it myself and I, I struggled back when I was 17, 18 doing that. Um, yeah. So yeah, how did how did you overcome that? And were there any any lessons I didn't, or tips no, you could share with us? No, oh, I didn't. I didn't overcome it. No, I and I <laughs> and after I got promoted to server, I flamed out in a month and a half. And ah, I got it. And then I got out of there, and I said never, never again. Uh, no, never going to work for anyone ever again. You know, it wasn't like too horrible of an experience. Uh, yeah, I just knew I didn't want to do that, and so I started building in a in a new direction, setting my sights on some on a different direction and I thought I wanted to be a personal trainer and I did that uh, learned and got the certification and did it for a few years and it was cool I was like 19 making $60 an hour and then I was like hmm well I'm trading time for money and it's like while it's six times more than everyone else my age it's not a ton of money 
And I find it very difficult in Fort Myers, Florida to even go up to $80 an hour, which really isn't much difference. Uh, and I'm also tied to a location. I was finding that, oh, I, I didn't want to go visit my family in Pennsylvania for the weekend because that's X amount of dollars that I'm missing out on. Go so ahead. I was tied to a location very much. Uh, if I was not in Fort Myers, Florida, I was not getting paid. So I wanted to build in a little bit of a new direction. And I, and I start really getting into the online space and uh, I've seen a lot of things happen there. I started out just developing websites. Okay, and, interesting. Yeah, and uh, then it evolved into over the past year and a half producing podcasts. And that's what we do at Trend Up Media. It's trendup.media is the website. It's dot com. It's dot media. And I am having a lot of fun, really enjoy serving my clients there. And yeah. Good on you, man. So the, the personal training, 19 years old, that's that's quite young to go into to that gig. And like you say, $60 an hour isn't bad. No, it's um, not. Certainly at that age, I'd, I'd have jumped for that when I was a, a, a mere whippersnapper. Hmm. Um, nearly bridging 30 now, so got got a few years. Really? Yeah, I, yeah. I was pegging you for around around my age with, uh, I don't know, I just, when, I, when, I, when we got on I was, and I saw you, I was like, oh, he's, he looks like he's my age, so. But <laughs> you're a little older than me. I know. Appreciate it, dude. So, yeah, tell us a bit more how you got into the personal training. I'm, I'm, I'm a bit of a gym fan too, and I'm sure I have some, some of our listeners or watchers are. Um, so yeah, tell us a bit more how how that came about and how you you acquired clients for that business. Oh well, look, I I learned from somebody and worked for that person for free for a couple of weeks, and and I went and studied uh, for the National Academy of Sports Medicine uh, certification and passed test, and uh, in a span of three weeks, like started studying for it and then passed the test. Um, and that was January of 2017. It was like January 7th or something, 2017. Okay. I passed the test, and and I passed, and I and then I did not start training people right away because what am I going to do if I wanted to train people right away? What am I going to work in a gym? No, I, that wasn't the point. Like I didn't want to work for anyone. So I, uh, I, you know, made this website on <laughs> seems really funny now on Wix. Oh, okay. Uh, which is just not the way to go. It is a, uh, what's the opposite of the word superior? Mm. It's just a, it's just a poor product compared to yeah. WordPress and other uh, stuff like that. Um, WordPress is superior, absolutely superior product. But anyway, I, I created a website and you know, the goal was to get my own in-home clients. And I, couldn't for two months because you know i was new and i didn't know how to get clients and okay i downloaded this app called thumbtack and uh essentially for independent contractors and all all sorts of independent contractors and personal training falls under that and there are people looking on that platform for personal training and they ah. and and people in your area will request quotes and you'll send them yep. out and and uh so i that's what I was doing. And I, and I remember it was March 20 something and I got my first client on that app. And then my second client came a couple of days later when I found a CrossFit gym in the area and I okay. followed, I followed everyone who follows that page. And with my, with my newly created health Instagram page at the time. And right. Like if you actually, it's kind of funny. If you scroll all the way back on gmu.show, my Growth Mindset University podcast page on Instagram, like if you scroll really far back, you'll actually see like personal training stuff and health stuff because uh, I, I just changed the name. So you revamped um, it. Yeah. Now it's, nice. you know, it's at a point where like there's hundreds of hundreds and hundreds of health posts. I mean, what about, I can't delete them all and and <laughs> and and I'm too far to like start new. But anyway, but I, uh, I followed everyone who followed that page and one person, uh, and it was over a thousand people, one person, and uh, I went to my website, filled out the contact form. I was interested in working with me and I actually trained him before I trained the client that I got on Thumbtack. It was like back to back days or something, but I trained him first. And so all of a sudden I had my first two clients and that was great. I was rocking and, uh, Sweet continued dude. to rock for a couple of years. Nice. 
So did you just follow like a thousand people that are interested in, in personal fitness that were in your local area on Instagram? That's absolutely. And then one of those went to your website, was a lead one. and you closed yeah. it. Yeah. And, and that, it. and that, though, that, those actions that day brought me, uh, you know, cause I, I, I kept, I kept him for, I think three years. Um, wow. Okay. Until the very end. And, so, I mean, that must be almost $20,000 of business. It must Not be too bad. Yeah. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I'm very happy with, um, with that. And, you know, that's enabled me to, um, you know, clients like that have enabled me to have cash to do other things. That's awesome, man. So that's some, some great lessons shared there in terms of persistence, prospecting for business. And then winning that business. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I bet that took some time though. But it's it, worth it. it sounds well, like. it it took two months. I mean, granted, I wasn't working on it all day every day. I was very much yeah. kind of hoping. But I remember thinking, or I remember my roommate saying to me because I was a freshman at college at the time. And my roommate said, "You know, Jordan, I think you might have to throw in the towel." And or actually, he said, "Bite the bullet." I think you're gonna have to bite the bullet and go work at LA Fitness. Uh, all right. <laughs> and I said, no, <laughs> I'm not doing that. Uh, and that week was the week that landed me my first two clients. Um, Powering three paid off. Yeah. Yeah. I could have quit it two months. I mean, two months is a very long time to ha- have, have a certain, because it expires in two years. You know? Um, so I, two months were down. I only had 22 months left of the certification. So I had to get moving. Um, before this is a complete failure, you know, I got, or, or I work at LA fitness and make God knows what, probably 15 bucks a session, you know, working my tail off, you know, I, I would suck. That would, Don't blame I, you. Yeah. All right. So we did that for a little while, got, got a couple clients, made some, some good money for a while. It sounded like, and then what was next for you, Jordan? What happened next? Was it the podcast? Was it something in between? Yeah. In the, I started developing websites okay or before, before the podcast yep and i started it's funny i was developing websites designing websites on wix really and so i was making like 400 dollars a pop and then i learned wordpress uh-huh. and that is like having knowing wordpress is like having it and no, being able to use it really well is like having a degree you might be able to attest to that and so then I was making three, four thousand dollars a pop, and that was interesting, different kind of money. And you know, granted, I was still doing it, but uh, more than what I was used to. And I was thinking, like, Jesus Christ, you know, personal training, I have to do uh, 50 sessions to make that money. You know, this is so I really wanted to start doing that more than the personal training. Uh, I was on to on to something, but then I was like, ah, I'm really just a, a another glorified freelancer, and so I want to like I really want to do something really actually entrepreneurial, and where I have a team and I'm very much the overseer of things, and where I'm not incredibly involved in fulfillment, okay. and so. That was uh, I was starting to build Trend Up Media. I wasn't called that then. I didn't it didn't have a name for a really long time. Actually, I don't think it had a name until 2020, which is pretty funny because um, it was it was just at like agency.jordanparis.com, and I and I would literally describe it as a marketing and production agency for podcasters, and uh, and then and then I I don't know I just I got a name and a new website and um, and yeah. Awesome, man. So that's interesting that you built websites, obviously us being a digital marketing company. How, how did that come about? So like you say, WordPress is a bit of a step up from Wix, which are fairly yeah. basic as we as we touched on without slating too much. Um, so WordPress, you're selling those for three, four grand a pop. Sounds like you're making not too too bad money. So how, how, how did that come about? I guess it was progressed from the Wix, was it? And how were you finding customers for that? Uh, I mean, they were finding me. I mean, it was, oh, I, right. and look, I wasn't getting a ton of business. Um, which you don't really need to when, with when you're making like three or four thousand at a time. Like if I just did one for the month, I was like, I was like, oh, cool, you know. 
Um, and I was, you know, I was like 20 at the time. And, um, I, yeah, I mean, I, if I were to like do it differently, I would, I would definitely have a lot better of a marketing and prospecting strategy today, but yeah, it really wasn't. It was, it was very much hope was my strategy, um, which is of course not a very good strategy. <laughs> Fair enough, Steve. All right. So trend up media came about. So tell us what was the inspiration? When was the light bulb moment where you decided that you wanted to start interviewing people? Cause we know you've had some great names. Well, on there, yeah, so, and such. so I, I mean, I started the podcast in 2018. Like that was a long time ago. Uh, so it was right. two and a half years ago. This is like, that's like in the middle of all this. Okay. So, I mean, I don't know. I mean, people ask me why I started the podcast all the time. And, and look, Sam, I, I just, I just don't know. I, I just, I don't know. I just did it. And, it, and uh, the, there's been a stroke of luck involved and the, 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 the time was right and everything was, everything was right. Um, and then I didn't quit even though I wanted to. And yeah. Okay. Well, that, that, that sounds pretty similar to me, really. I just thought at the end of last year, I want to interview people that have done better things than myself. I want to interview people that I can learn from. Um, I want to grow my network. I want to create some great content for social media, for the website, mm -hmm. and so on. And pretty much the same kind of thing. No real massive agenda. Mm -hmm. And um, much like yourself, we've been we've been fortunate. We've been blessed with to have some great guests just like yourself and, and many others. Yeah. So uh, interesting, dude. So that was going on in the midst of these other business ventures. Yeah. And then you managed to hit up some some great guests, like we've touched on. So it'd be it'd be awesome to learn. So I'm sure there's lots of um, people tuning in or watching live that have got all these great guests lined up, perhaps on a, a spreadsheet that they want to tap up. They want to think, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, Grant Cardone sounds pretty tasty to me. Um, I'd love to love to get him on a podcast for 30 minutes. So guide us through a bit more about how you've how you've um, got these these well-known guests, how you've reached out to them, and how you've, you've convinced them to get on your show. Yeah, well, number, I mean, number one, stop waiting and just ask. Uh, my friend Wesley is the one that in January of 2019 pushed me to, and that was... I don't know. I was probably in like month eight of my podcast and he's the one that really pushed me to start reaching out to the people that I had on my dream list instead of waiting for some magical day when things were perfect and I had more credibility. But I, and then I, I was like, I, yeah. cause I, I, I wanted to maximize my chances. And he was telling me how, you know, he gets rejected or people don't respond. And I was like, I was like, but he had some great guests and I was thinking like, Oh, well, I, I never, I've never gotten rejected. <laughs> like I, because I was shooting so low. I, I, I never, nobody yeah. ever ignored it or said no. Everyone was happy to do it because I, my, I had very middling hopes and dreams. And then I, 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 I wait two weeks to really like implement his advice. And then I, I do. And, uh, you know, a couple of people take chances on you and reach back even though they're above you and it just gets easier from there. And you start, you know, the, the, your credibility kind of, there's like a snowball effect of credibility in it. You know, it, it just got to a point of no return at some point in 2019. And I mean, really by, I mean, I, I went from January, February of 2019, really people not knowing about my podcast uh, and that was like eight, nine months in because I started in April of 18 to then two months or three months later, it was like a thing and really big guests were coming on. Um, and, and I, and it was so much more fun for me and it just completely transformed. And, and it wasn't just guests. It was, it was really dialing in my marketing on, on LinkedIn too. I was, uh, that was the beginning of my becoming very active on the platform uh, but you know, other than that, look, dude, I've I've read a lot of books on on communication and human behavior, and and okay. it seems like, and I, I I give away the emails in my book, the podcast playbook, and in a mini course on the internet because um, I have you know I have a pretty standard operating procedure with templates that I use for the initial cold outreach, follow up one, two, three, uh, and then a contingency plan. Uh, contingency plan is if you know if you receive a reply. Uh, maybe it's a rejection um, or the time isn't right or they're writing a book and, you know, set an appointment on your calendar to reach out again in under six months. 
If they don't reply at all, then six to 12 months set an appointment in your calendar to uh, follow up again. And I will use Boomerang for Gmail. I recommend everyone have Boomerang for Gmail. You may know the tool. Um, just a really great system to um, remember to follow up, uh, and, it, it, and you don't have you won't have to remember a thing, and and you'll just be able to follow up at the perfect time. I mean, you'll see what the tool is. Get Boomerang for Gmail, Boomerang for Outlook. So uh, like a reminder app, Jordan. I I use some apps yeah, myself. Yeah, you. I mean, you probably have something similar. There's like Yesware. Okay. Um, and it, you know, a, a secondary feature to the software is like tracking too. Uh, which, is, which is cool. Like I, like I, you know, I was sending an email to the like United States consulate in Bali last night because I, 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 I want to go there and I'm, and it, the, the, the whole border thing being closed or not is very nuanced right now. And I was like, and I, you know, I tried the number and that's not working. So I'm like, I got to send this email because I saw the email there. Yeah. But I was like, how, I was like, how the heck am I going to, I feel like they're not even going to read it. So then I, I, I was like, Oh yeah, boomerang. I'll put the track. I'll, I'll click the tracking button when I send the email and they read it in a few minutes and they literally clicked. I have links and icons in my signature with like my website and my social network. They clicked Jordan sure. five times. They clicked They They clicked like my Instagram, my, everything. And I got a reply. I was I was like, holy shit! Yeah, I never had so many people like. I've never had so many clicks of. The, I don't know why. <laughs> who who is at the United States Embassy in in Bali right now? They must have been now. forwarding it around to loads of people, and everyone was just clicking all the links and stuff. Yeah. So um, <laughs> so they were. So, awesome. so it was cool to like see that. Um, yeah. That's a okay. different kind of example, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, cool, man. So it sounds, from what you've said so far, Jordan, to, to get some of these great guests on, you made a great statement, stop waiting and just ask. So if you're running a podcast, I mean, that doesn't have to apply to building a podcast. That can apply to anything, whether it's yeah, yeah, yeah. generating sales, whether it's yeah. doing a task that's important for your own activity or own business. Um, mm -hmm. So I love that. Now, Absolutely. it sounds like you had their email system of some sort of set up to reach out to these prospective guests that you wanted to get on. And... Um, to, to get them on the show and you had some kind of system where you'd follow up every few months, it sounds like. Well, it, it, and you know, that's if I go through the sequence and and if I when I go through the entire sequence, then I put them in the queue in, a few months later. But I will generally follow up every one or two weeks. Okay. Um, for like three weeks. Got it. Uh, so, yeah. Nice. And is that when you say for three weeks and then after that time you'll leave it and you'll, you'll just leave them for a few months and then maybe mm -hmm. follow up in six months or something like that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, I know it's in your guide. I know it's in your book, but could we perhaps get a quick taster of what one of these email outreaches um, might look like? Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to give you the exact thing because um, I don't feel like clicking around on my computer and I don't want to give it away to the general public. <laughs> and sure. yeah. Uh, but there's a couple of elements that you need in there. I mean, definitely acknowledge how how busy they are. Yeah, uh, I, I do that right off the bat. I'm like totally, uh, or what do I say? Um, eh, it doesn't matter. But then you know, the the then then I will say, I will show them. I'll, I'll write like a couple sentences about how much I I care. You know, because uh, I'm I'm always reach, I'm I'm reaching out exclusively to people whose work I've consumed, and so I you know I pick out something specific that that only I could that I could only know from consuming their content book, whatever posts. Um, you could even say like, Oh, saw your tweet on this the other day. And here's what I think about it. Uh, but you yeah. know, providing a, maybe a little buzz, like a compliment, give it a little rush there, uh, but not gloating or anything. You know, you're not putting yourself like completely below them as like in the category of follower. Go to, um, you know, because they'll just kind of want to swatch you like a fly. But, you know, definitely proving to them that you care and that you have consumed their work. Because, um, look, I, I, I say I say yes to everyone who who my work, who my, um, you know, maybe my podcast made a great has made a great impact on them. They've listened to so many episodes and I don't care whose podcast it is, how big or small it is. I'll say yes to it if they, um, you know, if they've if when they 
prove to me that they've consumed my work in the outreach email or message. Um, I, and I don't say yes to everyone. In fact, now I, I look, I just, I don't know. I mean, I, I have the time. I just don't feel like adding stuff to my schedule. I, I like to have it like as blank as possible, <laughs> to be honest. Um, you know, so, but, but one way to get me and a lot of people is, is to do that. Uh, prove that you've consumed their work, give them that little rush uh, of, a, of a compliment. And then, uh, and then, yeah, I go into introducing myself and who I've interviewed. And I mean, for me, it's really easy now, you know, some of the sure. people I can say I've interviewed and, um, you know, I can say I've interviewed Mark Manson twice. Uh, you know, so not only a lot of people, not only are, are people coming, but they're coming back. They had such a great experience. Um, and I don't know, like I'll look at uh, who their follower, who, who, who they follow. And maybe if I've interviewed one of them, I'll, you know, I'll may be sure to mention them. Uh, then I'll, then I'll talk real and, and really like one or two or three sentences per paragraph. Um, then I'll talk about uh, just talk about the show in one sentence. Uh, I'll link to it because I have a lot of ratings there. Uh, a lot of social proof there. And then I'll be like, uh, I'll give them a double binding question, you know. Okay. Double binding question where in both I, I, I give people a couple of options and, and uh, both options and, you know, I give them the illusion of choice, you know, because everyone wants to have choice and free will and be the decision maker. And, but really both outcomes are favorable to me. So I'm like, what did you, do you want to, do you want to loop in a member of your team to help us out? Or would it be easier to go ahead and secure your spot really quickly on my online calendar? Uh, and I will not link the calendar there. I feel like that's too aggressive um, and too assumptive. Uh, do that in the next email. But yeah, and then I'm like, totally get how busy you are. So even a short reply would be great. Cheers, Jordan. Done. That's awesome, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So that's no, that that's a that's almost sounds like a, a perfect way to, to reach out. So basically, and you're acknowledging they're very very busy. You're referencing some content that you've personally consumed of theirs. So if they're a podcaster, you can say, look, just watch this episode, Jordan with Sam yeah. Dunning. Love the point where you talked about how to build a podcast. Uh, blah blah blah. Um, yes. Or you, if you haven't, you could mention a, a tweet or a LinkedIn piece of content maybe that they shared that you liked and why you liked it. Um, quick intro of your show. And then finish with like a double binding question. Is it best to speak to one of your team first or would you yeah. rather schedule 15 on my calendar? Cool, yeah. man. And now this, this is something I've tried new recently. I've, I've done it one time and it worked one time on a multi-billionaire. Here okay. it is. Uh, the, the co-founder of one of my favorite companies. Everyone knows this company. I won't say it. And I, cause I hadn't really consumed his work, honestly other than just loving the company. And so I was like, look, man, I'm really excited to, um, maybe I maybe I referenced one of his LinkedIn posts, but then I was like, I'm really excited to dive into your new book on Audible and, uh, and consume it this week. And I, th and I think that that was enough. He was like, thanks, man, I hope you enjoy it. Um, and uh, had one of his assistants uh, help us in in getting scheduled. And honestly, this sounds super s crappy, but if he didn't respond, I don't know that I would have uh, read his book, or at least I wouldn't have prioritized it. Maybe I would have read it in two years. Um, but you know, if you really want to play that card and, and take that route. I mean, you could, you could do that. Um, you just hope that they don't say, yeah, we'll do tomorrow. And then you've got to read a book in like 12 hours. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's interesting. A nice little kind of putting out the bait. And then if they take it, it's, uh, it's a done deal. Yeah. I'm one for one so far. <laughs> we'll see. I don't know how much <laughs> I'm going to use that. <laughs> Interesting, dude. All right, cool. Well, um, yeah, we'll go go through that, and we'll we'll put the links in the description of how people can can find and purchase your guide, man. So appreciate you running through that with us. Um, 
And uh, yeah, just before we move on, what about when you didn't have any guests? So when you wanted to get your first, let's say, well-known guest, how did you do that when you couldn't necessarily yeah. reference other ones? Yeah, everyone starts somewhere. Format? I was just asking, and some people take chances on you. Yeah, that's it. Fair enough. Simple as that. Okay, yeah. cool. Now, um, obviously, you don't shoot for... I mean, there there's levels to this. You yeah. shoot shoot much higher, but but don't reach out to like Tony Robbins yet, because he won't take a chance on you. Um, you do have to. There are some people that you do still have to work your way up to. Um, like I said, there's levels to this, uh, but yeah, makes sense, man. Okay. Cool. And yeah, we know you've had some some great ratings. So like we said at the intro, you've been at number six in Apple's self-improvement, number three in training, number five in how to. How are you promoting this podcast? How are you getting people to listen to it, Jordan? What's what's proof? Uh, yeah, I mean the message is resonating on resonating on LinkedIn. It it just is. Yeah. 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 Pr primarily LinkedIn, would you say is it's been the one? Pr primarily, yeah. And has there mm -hmm. been a strategy behind that? Has it been a certain type of posting or something that's worked particularly well? I don't know. I mean, I feel like people who follow me could say better. Um, it's hard to like, I don't know. I mean, when you're a, like a, fi a fish doesn't really know it's in water. If you were to take it out of water, yeah, it, it would know. Um, so I feel like I'm a, I'm a fish in water in that sense where like it's hard for me to like see and know. Uh, I don't know. I'm just stupid freaking advice of I'm just being me um, and I'm not really afraid to to say um, amazing down to earth advice I appreciate it Angeline thanks um, I'm you know I'm not I'm just not afraid to take a stand on controversial issues and I think people really appreciate that um, I mean you know, I guess some of the th superficial things I do are like I'll do one line paragraphs. Um, I don't write big blocks of text. Um, a, a lot of times I ask questions. Like, for example, the other day was I posed a question because um, the post was about, you know, reading fewer books, but more deeply. Uh, so I was like, what books have you read twice? And got like 160 some comments. And, you know, the post said, 20 some thousand views, which is actually good nowadays. It used to be pretty average for me, but now it's yeah, good. The views have dropped so much, man, on LinkedIn. Don't yeah, get it has, has. So that was a pretty great performing post in, in terms of relativity uh, in recent times. Um, and I was, every single comment was people who saying what books I read twice and tagging the authors. And then the authors were like commenting. Got it. And so it was like, and I was like, I would have gotten 10 comments if I didn't pose that question, you know? So I, I think posing a question is a lot of times a good strategy. That was just, a, that's a really easy question to answer for people. It's not always like that. Sometimes people are really doing, people ignore your question. That's happened to me a lot. Um, people will still comment, but they'll ignore your question. Uh, it's interesting. Um, but that's your fault. That's my fault. Um, you know, I, it just wasn't a, a great question no, no, I, answer, but yeah. I completely agree with what you mean and I think not being afraid to air your own view to a certain extent helps quite a lot so people can actually get a taste of what you're like as a person yeah I mean I I, I, I subscribe to the philosophy of turning uh, you got to turn some people off to turn others on I really do I mean so so people if they've seen my takes on education and they've seen my political stances they either love me or hate me. They really do. I, I Sam, I, I have a lot of people that, that hate me. I, I really do. And that's fine. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure I do too, man. I'm sure some people switch this off after after five minutes. So don't worry too much about that. Just just from hearing my voice. Anyway, let's move on, dude. Let's talk um, quickly a bit about your production business. Um, tell us a bit more about that and kind of how have you acquired clients? Was that just from people listening to your podcast? Did they approach you and say, look, Jordan, I love your podcast. Please start yeah, producing well, mine. Was a bit more to it? Yeah, well, look, I mean, some some pretty automatic systems I have in place right now. I mean, uh, there's strength in numbers. The more profile visits I get on LinkedIn, the more people book consultations on my website, trendup.media. It's uh, pretty simple to book consultations there. Um, everything points to booking a free consultation. And 
Uh, also, people who um, you know listen to my podcast and uh, people who listen to my podcast, I, I think I think every single podcaster who listens to my podcast has signed up for my free course on podcasting at this point. I mean, it's been a year, and I, I just I, I can't imagine a podcaster that listens to my podcast that hasn't signed up for the course. I think I just nailed the 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 the, the messaging around it and um and and I just I, I didn't wear it out either. Like I didn't promote it every single episode. I would sometimes I went two months without promoting it. Um, I would do it every other episode or every three or maybe two or three in a row. Um, and now I, th I, the reason I think I've gotten just about everyone to sign up for my free course on podcasting is because it, you know, the, the velocity at which people sign up has slowed down to a crawl. Um, I like when I advertise it on my podcast, not a ton of people sign up anymore uh, because I, I, I just, there's not, there's not many of them left. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> the only people that are signing up are new people. So, you know, when people, when the email comes through that so-and-so signed up for, uh, you know, the course, I will start a dialogue with them. Um, there, there have only been a handful, a handful of people, uh, you could count on my finger, who, who have signed up for the course and who I have not sent a personal email to. Um, Got it. So a lot of personal, personalized outreach, it sounds like, Jordan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is kind of shone through throughout the episode, really, in terms of the way you outreach to firstly the the instagram guys to get your um gym signups or your personal training signups right. rather yeah i yeah yeah i guess so yeah and then um then with the the email messaging to, to your ideal guests and now through the uh yeah production can work in business i need to do a lot more cold outreach i'd say that the people who i i reach out to you know who sign up for the course i mean those are like very warm leads those are it's like sure. a warm outreach they, they're very 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 familiar with me they're excited about the course or they've maybe gone through it already um and they trust me so it's it's very different um and there's a lot of room for growth here right now for me so yeah okay if i could just take what i do with podcasts and the cold outreach i do there and implement it in my business like that would be <laughs> that'd be great Maybe we'll speak in a year's time and you'll work out a way to do it. Yeah. I mean, I know how to do it. I mean, I'll probably do it today, honestly. Cool, dude. All right, man. Well, um, yeah, we've, we've covered some some great ground. And is there one thing, Jordan, that you could suggest to people tuning in that they should be doing with digital marketing from today that can benefit their business? Yeah, I mean, I'm preaching at the choir because we're, we're doing this on LinkedIn, but it just amazes me how many people – do not understand the power of LinkedIn. And, uh, you know, when you mentioned LinkedIn as a marketing strategy and a podcasting Facebook group, people are like, wait, what? Huh? All I know is like Instagram and getting eight views on Instagram. That's all I know. So thinking that if you want to be heard in 2020 and you don't currently have traction, you have to be on LinkedIn. But again, preaching to the choir here. It's nothing world changing for cool, people man. listening to this. <laughs> awesome, dude. Well, everyone, you've been tuning in to Sam's Business Growth Show, where we sit down with business leaders, experts, and entrepreneurs from around the globe. We found out their story, how digital marketing has helped along the way, and their exclusive tips and insights to help you skyrocket yourselves and your business. Jordan, we like to ask everyone that comes on this show if you could thank just one person, either dead or alive, having a positive influence on yourself and your career, who would that be? And why? Hmm. Running through the through the books right now. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. There's Captivate, uh, or uh, it's Vanessa Van Edwards who wrote the book Captivate: Science of Succeeding with People. Uh, she taught me how to talk, and then uh, Robert Green. Okay, and why him? Well. <laughs> have been instrumental and uh he's been very he's a very kind person and uh very kind to me and and i really uh, i really appreciate him that was probably my favorite podcast ever the one that i did with him uh and his work has just been so transformational for me 
Cool, man. Well, Jordan, tell us a bit more about your podcast, your business, your guide, and how people can connect with yourself and learn, learn from you. Yeah, I mean, Growth Mindset University is the podcast. We're, uh, we're learning the lessons we should have learned in school but didn't. Uh, I just think that what's going on in the education system is absolutely tragic. I know a lot of people share the same view. Uh, if you share that view and feel that you were you, 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 you just didn't get out of school what you were hoping for and uh, you want some real learning from real practitioners and Growth Mindset University is for you. And uh, yeah, jordanparis.com slash courses uh, where people can get my free podcasting course. I have a lot of glowing reviews on that and uh, I know that uh, you'll enjoy it. And I'm constantly like adding to it as well. Um, yeah. So anyway, appreciate you having me, Sam. Are you tired of constantly hunting for new customers? You could be missing out on regular inbound opportunities, all because your website isn't on the first page of Google. Perhaps you're already spending lots of money on advertising, but your website is failing to convert all of your hard-earned visitors into a consistent flow of new customers. If you'd like to learn more about our unusual approach that brings idle clients straight to you, connect with Sam Dunning on LinkedIn or Book a free 20 minute consultation via webchoiceuk.com. That's webchoiceuk.com. Subscribe today for more digital marketing, sales, and business growth tips from the experts.